The fighting continues. Yes, Kamali, and it's pretty clear. Prime Minister Netanyahu's made clear his absolute focus is the destruction of Hamas. And uh, for the last four months, the Grand Offensive has systematically been working through Gaza with that objective in mind. Now, the work around a, a, some sort of ceasefire or potential pause, for that to work, both sides have got to be incentivized to make it work. Now, Hamas clearly are no match militarily for the IDF, so it's no great surprise they're willing to negotiate. It's not entirely clear why the IDF would want to negotiate, but there is... Pressure building from the US, particularly uh, US Secretary of State Blinken's on his fifth visit to the region since the 7th of October, clearly in an effort to avoid uh, any escalation. They've also put a deal on the table, potentially for some ceasefire, two months long, 100 hostages potentially released, a uh, big injection of humanitarian aid into the region. Um, but uh, there's, um, that's gone through the negotiating team out to the Israelis, then to Hamas. Hamas has come back with a counter-proposal. Mm -hmm. And that's a three-phase approach. The first phase is to release women and children hostages. Second phase, all the rest. Third phase is to release the bodies. In return, the uh, Palestinian prisoners would be released and also there would be um, a full withdrawal from Gaza of the Israeli Defence Force. Now, it's evident that some elements of that Prime Minister Netanyahu will have no, you know, no time for at all. What we don't know, though, is whether Prime Minister Netanyahu is, is no appetite at all for a deal, just wants to focus on the fighting, or whether or not the, there may be a continuation of negotiations. But as we discussed just off air before we came on, there are, we do understand there are some negotiations continuing in Egypt and actually breaking. There are reports that Israeli is willing to look at Yahya Sinwar, the head of Hamas, going on exile out of the country as mm. part of that deal. Maybe that could be the thing that uh, brings this about in the, in the near term. Uh, and what does all of this continued fighting, those words from the Israeli government, mean for the hostages? That are, That's the one uh, thing we've really sort of taken our off in a bit, because on that fateful day on the 7th of October, 240 hostages were taken. Um, since that time, uh, about 100 were released uh, over the period. They've also had three killed by accident by the Israeli Defence Forces. Now, Israel thinks that 32 further have died, actually, in Gaza. They also think that there might be another 20 that have died. That leaves a total of about 84 hostages, potentially, mm -hmm. that are alive somewhere in the Gaza. The trouble is, Israel's right on the cusp of starting the third phase of its offensive down in Rafa. As a reminder, first phase was up in Gaza City, second phase down in Khan Yunis. There's been over a million Palestinians have been fleeing, heading down south as that uh, offensive has continued, which means the population density down in Rafa is really intense. Any military operation will be incredibly difficult because how does the Israeli Defence Force discriminate between civilians, Hamas fighters and the hostages. As a result of that, um, protests in the Tel Aviv have been mounting because they think more should be done by Netanyahu to release the hostages. But quite bluntly, this deal, if it can't be brokered in some way, mm. it looks like the last opportunity for the hostages before that offensive starts to get underway. And if that gets underway without them released, the prospects look pretty bleak for the remaining hostages. OK, sure, appreciate the analysis, as always. Thank you very much. For that.